Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and this is another rant by Diggity. This isn't one. I actually had a fun rant a day or two ago that I was thinking about posting, and I guess I'll try to incorporate aspects of that into this. This isn't exactly the topic I wanted to cover, <clears throat> but I'm going to. Um, what are we addressing here? What's the title? I think I'm going to leave the title what I was expecting the previous title the games were forced to play, but I'm going to put up a not safe for work tag because I, I don't know, I might curse on this and I'm certainly going to cover not safe for work topics and certainly going to make it uncomfortable. Um, why am I going to make it uncomfortable? I think there is an aspect in society, I won't get into all the reasons why I think it is, where people oftentimes don't want to confront problems and as a result, problems persist. And here I want to confront them, or at least make sure they're confronted. I think the community is doing a pretty good job of confronting it as it is. I think secondarily, I want to just talk about things. Um, how do I put this? I think all too often in making a statement or putting two cents out there, it becomes about the per And honestly, this is for stress relief on my part, just because I feel like I, I won't get into all the reasons why it's stress relief. Um, or why I feel the need to whatever. That's my own personal reasons. Um, but I feel like oftentimes when people are making statements like this, what it ends up becoming is scapegoating in some instances where it's like, oh, this person is bad and we're the good ones. Um, or creating tribes where it's like, oh, well, this is my opinion and that's their opinion. And if only, I, I think this has been the case for all of history where it's like, if only that other group would change to my viewpoint, then everything would be okay. I don't think there's ever been a single point in history where there's been a, or I can't think of a single point in history when everybody's been on the same page. And I'm sure in the instances where it has been everyone on the same page, it was oppressive and terrible and didn't last for long. Um, yeah, so I don't want to do that. I don't want to tell you what to think. I want you to think for yourself. Uh, and let me bring up what I'm talking about in the first place. Yay. Uh, so about three years ago, there was a, a Me Too movement within the esports community. The esports community is pretty rife for abuse, and so there are a lot of people that came forward. One of the individuals that was accused in the mix of that was someone who engaged in League of Legends and also StarCraft casting. And part of the accusations, some of the milder ones were, well, actually, I don't know if I want to say milder or like attribute what's what, but dick pics were sent was part of the ac accusation by several people. Um, in particular to underage teens, there are further accusations of uh, emotional coercion into sex, and I don't, I don't know if that was underage or not. I don't know the full depth of all the accusations. I just know that there's a lot of them there. Um, in the meantime, uh, that person disappeared for about three years. Were those accusations, did they go to court? I don't know. Uh, have they been verified? I don't know. Um, yeah. Person disappeared, though, for three years. They reappeared at the 25th anniversary uh, LAN tournament for BSL and started casting on stream, which upset a lot of people, including myself. Um, and there was a lot of responses from the community. Uh, I'm going to address some of them and talk about them. Before I dive into things too deeply, though, I want to provide an aspect of advice engaging in anything like this. Uh, there is a philosopher who goes by Hannah Ardent who talks about when you're building a system or when you're building a community or you're trying to, to make judgments or talk about justice, what you can do is you can try to don the veil of ignorance. And what the veil of ignorance is, is you set everything up and then you try, to, and you try to distance yourself, pull yourself out of your own mental frame and out of your own projections and out of your, your own issues by uh, setting up the rules how you would like to see fit. But then you don't get to decide when you enter the system what role you play. So here we, we have someone who's accused of being a perpetrator. We have potential victims. We don't, we don't know. We have the community. We have community organizers. Um, so I think the easiest way to approach it is pretend, so ignore, you don't get to choose once you enter in judgment after the fact, uh, which individual you are is the case um, as an aspect. Uh, so that's, I, I think that's helpful in examining these sort of instances. 
Before I dive into uh, some of the community comments and I guess personal responses to them, I'm trying to, I don't know, I'm trying to be fair these days. Um, I don't know if it's absolutely necessary, partly because I just don't want to, I want, I want people to stop being assholes is what it comes down to. I want drama to stop. I want people to do the right thing is what it comes down to. I want there to actually be like positive something that comes out of all of this where there's, you know, a positive change and not drama. Um, I don't know that that will ever be the case. Maybe this is just an example for other communities to do things down the line. Um, it's interesting. There was actually a recent documentary talking about why League of Legends outpaced Heroes of New Earth. And the argument of the documentary was, oh, it was because League of Legends had a better business model, which I actually disagree with. Uh, for a lot of people's point of view, Heroes of New Earth was the better game. It was more polished, had a larger community initially. But I think it actually ended up <clears throat> ironically acting as kind of a toxicity filter field uh, for the early League of Legends community, which is saying something because I don't think the League of Legends community is lacking to toxicity. However, I do think that in the early stages, the community was less toxic than Heroes of New Earth. And, as real, and also there seemed to be an actual effort to make things less toxic in a particular way. And so I think the community ended up winning out is what it comes down to. It just had, ironically, and I think League of Legends is just as toxic. It's just toxic in different ways that are more appealing to a wider base, potentially. Um, and I think that's something to keep in mind in a lot of the spaces of this. And for anybody creating a, trying to create a gaming community forward, is this okay? What gaming community? And at, I think up to this stage, gaming communities have primarily been strongholds of men, and they have reflected a lot of negative aspects of men as a result. I wish that was not the case, and I don't want that to be the case moving forward, I guess, is the other aspect. That's just from my perspective. Anyway, let me fold in aspects of the other rant, and then we'll dive into the rest of this. Um, and why am I doing it? Because uh, if you, first of all, no, I'm not going to convince everybody. It's kind of like, part of it is, is I'm just not, uh, and that's okay. Um, I'm not very good at rhetoric. Um, in fact, most of the time when I state things, I found that people want to disagree with me. They're like, I don't, I've had a, a, an individual say that the way you say things makes me want to disagree, which is fantastic in these sort of in instances. Um, so I guess what am I, I guess I'm still rolling it around in my head. This is actually, this is like my fourth take at this too. Hmm. I think frustration gets in the way. Not everybody's uh, never, uh, we're never going to have everybody on the same page. So I think instead what we have to do is we have to engage in a degree of confrontation until we have something that works suitably for everybody. And I think it's important to confront and to push through that and to work through conflict. Uh, because when you remain silent, I think you end up with the inverse, which I think, let's say everybody, uh, you, do, you do have the quote unquote normal and everybody's supposed to abide by the normal. Um, I think quietly, that's a lie. I don't think whenever you have a cultural norm, I think oftentimes people end up being oppressed by that cultural norm. So what I would like to see moving forward, I suppose, in the world is, is a recognition that there is no one that is normal. And that includes me. I can guarantee you I am not normal in any way, shape, or form. And I don't think normal exists. Maybe that's biased because I'm so abnormal as a person. But in recognition of that, I want people to be able to be themselves and at the same time uh, not harm other people. So I guess this is the not safe for work opener of this is if you feel the desperate need to send someone a dick pic, there are people you can pay to do that. Or there's even people you can do that with. For, for there, It's interesting. There's actually a Reddit post I'm going to recommend here in the background where it's women I'm um, talking about things that guys do that aren't attractive. And guess what the number thing on the list was? Um, so if you're interested in actually attracting women, maybe a good thread to go to, to figure out what not to do. Um, ironically, it almost feels like men are more interested in doing things that I think they presume will attract other men when they're trying to attract women. Because if you actually keep an eye on what women are interested in it, these days, it seems to be uh, non-binary non Korean pop stars. 
So maybe emulate them instead of tossing dick pics. But I think it's a fetish, potentially. And part of the reason I don't want to name names, and I don't want to invoke a lot of shame, uh, or maybe not a lot of fear, because that actually might be an aspect of it. There's also a possibility that there's an aspect of like a power dynamic as well. And all of those things encapsulated, rather than kink shaming or something along those lines, there's healthy ways to engage in that that don't involve lack of consent. In fact, if you want to play around with concepts of consent, you still have to have initial consent and there's communities you can engage with to do that. Uh, random people who don't want to see it or environments where you don't want to see it. So let me I'll make a counter example. You have Artosis' stream where people post Dick Askey all the time, but you can close chat on, Ask, on Artosis' stream or just not watch his stream. If you're sending something to someone uninvited, you're in the wrong. And I will stand by that. Consent is extremely important at all stages. Uh, comparatively, a confession on my end, uh, I have, in, and I don't know, actually, I'm trying to think of a way to share this, actually. If you want to hear all of the fantastic, exciting details, feel free to PM me, or if you have other issues you're working through, I'm happy to discuss with them in person. I had a conversation, a long standing conversation with some individual that was sensitive in nature, and I consistently asked along the way, uh, do you want me to stop? Yes, no. Or should we continue? Yes, no. Um, and eventually I recognized it was not getting a clear answer to that. And I wish I had stopped earlier because even in the space of ambiguity, I think the answer has to be no. Uh, and take it from someone who is bipolar and has random, what you think is happening, and this is true even when you're not bipolar, what you think might be happening isn't always what's happening in reality. So it's always important, and it's definitely not always what's happening with the person on the other end. So it's always important to check in and to make sure there's clear communication and that there's a continual line of consent before engaging in any of this. And I'm going to stand by that. Um, in that particular instance, I'm definitely disappointed in myself, but I definitely feel like hopefully I can do better in the future uh, in general. Um, so towards that end, I guess for myself and others, this is like inserting, I'm trying to think of a way to like insert myself in the position of everybody. So I'll, I'll, I'll insert myself in the position of the perpetrator in this instance. Should people uh, be allowed forgiveness? Yes, I think so. If I'm going in the, the veil of ignorance and having to insert myself in the space of uh, the perpetrator, yeah, I think forgiveness should be, redemption should be a possibility for anybody. However, I think the secondary question that has to be asked there is just disappearing for three years with no explanation adequate. I mean, does that demonstrate shame or contrition or anything? Um, is that adequate to then be put in potentially a position that was utilized in the first place to perpetrate the behavior? Uh, flipping it around and being in the place of the victim and also, I don't know, maybe being at the LAN event when the individual showed up or something along those lines, or maybe being at the event and then not wanting to make a ruckus and then uh, this person being forwarded over your head or without your permission or something along those lines. I, I want to, this is actually from the original rant, I want to make a comparison and talk about uh, search engine optimization and healthy and unhealthy competition and just kind of parallels along there. So if you don't know what search engine optimization is, it's probably why you're ending up listening to this rant in the first place. Um, I'll make a, an example out of my own content. For the, the Hasu League games that are in match brackets that have the word finals, I've noticed that they tend to perform better as far as views in comparison to the other videos. And I don't think that's because people are clicking on them because of the word finals. I think it's just YouTube recommends those more often, probably because people who are interested in esports events tend to view the finals more than the rest of the content the sum of finals and finals. So if the word final, so I could adjust all my content, put in like quarterfinals, finals, or change my name to finals SC or something along those lines and try to exploit that. Or I can just, you know, keep going as I'm going. I don't like exploiting that. There was an article not too long ago. We had an individual, I assume writing for a tech website, and he was discussing how he stole SEO from a rival site. And what he did is he just made a site map of the rival site, took a bunch of keywords, piped that through chat GPT, to create content on his site. And then a, lo and behold, a bunch of traffic came to him. Now you'll notice in the space of this, the it's no longer about whatever the site was originally supposed to be about. It's no longer serving whatever function or purpose it was originally intending. However, anybody engaging in whatever that space is 
is no longer engaging in content creation for the benefit of any community. They're engaging in some weird war to get eyes and exploiting a system. Uh, and as a result, everybody has to do that. In comparison, let me talk about and kind of loop in, there's healthy competition, which I really felt like was ex exhibited, I think, at the New York City land. Uh, I felt like everybody there was on the same page. Even when people lost, they still felt a degree of camaraderie with the other individuals there. The first place player actually felt uh, somewhat apologetic uh, for a lot of the tactics that were used. But at the same time, I think the tactics that were utilized were weakness in the runner-up's play. And part of the aspect of that was, I think, a general recognition that acknowledgement of that will help the runner-up adjust their level of play for a similar situation in the future. It will help, and it helps everybody improve as a result. And it adds across the board. And as far as I know, they're still friends. They're still comrades. They're still rivals. They're still pushing each other to be better. I saw something similar on uh, Artosis' stream. He's playing an old friend of his, G5. And even though G5 is a Protoss player, I still think they would, he would call him a friend. But he beat him multiple times in a row. And he wasn't beating him to humiliate him. He wasn't beating him uh, to bully him. He was beating him because he was trying to prepare for this very land that we're talking about. And so in a lot of uh, ways, he was doing it in order to make him better. And I think that's the healthy aspect of competition. And that's also an aspect of competition that um, I like a lot. Uh, in comparative spaces, there's similar controversy in the Slate the Spire space, which is not a competitive game. I still enjoy playing it and I actually recommend it to a lot of people. I have a lot of personality flaws. And something I really like about playing Slay the Spire is I think it helps two in particular, which is impulsivity and not thinking things entirely through before I dive in. Sometimes even after thinking things through, I dive in anyway. As in this instance, thought about just keeping my mouth shut, but that's not me. Um, but uh, And I want to make a side comment there. I think engaging in Slay the Spire, engaging in the StarCraft community, engaging in healthy competition, uh, there's... You can have the aggression, you can have the competition without the hostility. And I think that's, that's possible and that's good. And I think that makes me a better person. I do not think that makes me better than someone else. And I hope that differentiation is understood. So now let's talk about the unhealthy side of competition, which I think is to a degree the opposite of that, where there is hostility, where there is a degree of feeling, if I win this, if I am the best at this, then I am better than someone else. And then as a subsequent uh, almost add on as an aspect of that. Now I can treat other people poorly. And the only thing that ever matters is winning. And as much as I want to say that this is a flawed point of view, it does seem that the rest of us enable that by how we behave. For example, in the NFL, there's a player who is very good at throwing the football. And as a result, he is paid an excessive amount of money and people ignored his sexual assault charges. Um, I don't know why we allow people who are good at a thing to behave poorly. In fact, some of the comments I saw uh, in response to this were, well, he's a bad caster. Why was he ever allowed? And I guess my counter question to that is if he was a really good caster with a lot of knowledge, would what he have done been okay? And would he have been okay to do this now? And I think the answer, I don't think that's what people are saying, but I just kind of want to point that out, mostly so that people can address themselves in the space of this. Um, but I think part of what happens is, is there just ends up being kind of an outsourcing of responsibility to a certain degree. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's people are willing to, I don't know why a lot of people are willing to just ignore uh, a lot of this. Maybe because it's like, oh man, I just really like the base thing and I don't feel like, and maybe it goes down to just a work mentality because at a certain point, when you're working with someone, we can look at it from this frame. When you're working with someone, you're not going to have everybody on the same page and you're going to have people that are kind of off. So, uh, for example, and kind of also in the frame of this argument, if I'm trying to have an argument with a flat earther, I'm probably not going to convince them. That doesn't mean I don't think I should not hang out with them or discuss other things with them. I do think that might be a bad idea if I'm trying to engage in science with them uh, to come to a clear conclusion. So I think that and you can see kind of where I'm going with this um, in that space where, I don't know, hopefully that, that point's clear. It felt a little fuzzy to me. Um, yeah. Between SEO and between bad competition, I also want to point out 
the in-between lack of consent, where when people are engaging in bad competition, I saw this in the Slave the Spire community with a rant from a friend of the channel that I'm not going to, I don't want to restoke that fire, or create that mess over there. I don't know, maybe once I go check out Jorbs, he's got a rant about someone recently. And I kind of feel for him because Jorbs, and I'll use him as an example. Hopefully he doesn't mind. And if he does, he'll let me know in private because he's a cool dude like that. Um, he's a really good player. He plays primarily to entertain people. If you want to learn the game, go check out Zeknar, Blur, if when he's streaming, or Baylor Lord. They're wonderful resources. But if you want to be entertained watching Slay the Spire, go to Jorbs. Jorbs do- plays the game intending to entertain people, which I think makes the level of talent and time he's put into it actually... Uh, It impresses me more. I don't want to use the word talent. He's put in a massive amount of hard work um, to be very, very good at that game. He had another individual, not just insulting him, but others in the community, trying to make Slay the Spire a a competitive thing, but I think also trying to make it where this is the correct way to play it, this is the good way to play it, and this is what makes you superior. And part of the problem is, is Jorbs or others like him might be able to do the same thing he's doing and play it in that particular way, but all that does, all that ends up doing is, is proving him right. And you see how there's a lack of consent between the SEO, between the, the bad competition. Everybody ends up forced into that sphere. And honestly, I don't think people who are engaging in that style of anything enjoy doing things that way either, ultimately, at the end of the day. And so I feel like uh, if, if you're engaged in that, maybe some self-examination might be helpful as well. Um, yeah, I think there's other instances where people have money where they get away with bad behavior. I think part of that ends up because of like side consequences. I think there's certain people, there's a response that I think I saw on the thread, or at least I got the essence of where it's like, oh, we should ignore this and focus on the, the 25th anniversary. I don't, and I think this happens a lot in the Starcraft community as well, where there's just extreme amounts of demand on individuals participating where like, honestly, I don't have a lot of free time in life and I try to squeeze, I I squeeze a large portion of it that I probably shouldn't. In fact, like as a lot, as an, as a result of a lot of this, I'm kind of debating how much, I don't know, I'll talk to my therapist about it, how much engagement I should have because it's frustrating and stressful and hobbies should be fun and entertaining and stress relieving instead of the other way around. Um, But point being, if we're just ignoring it, then we've basically said that brood war is more important than people at a certain degree. Or we've created, like, there's another word for just everything, no matter how terrible it being for the greater whatever the thing is. It's called a cult or sometimes a nationalistic nation. And I don't think those are positive things either. Um, now I feel like I'm just straight up ranting and not giving people a lot of space uh, to have an alternate opinion, but whatever. I'm trying my best. Um, Anyway, um, so let's pull back. Let's go back to the veil. Uh, I think it's fairly reasonable to say if you're a perpetrator, showing contrition, showing how you're going to change your behavior, showing that you have changed your behavior, uh, addressing the problem in the first place, and not engaging in, I don't know, uh, continued things where there's like a forced aspect on other people, uh, shows shows health. And in the meantime, again, I want to iterate that, yeah, there's healthy, if, you, if people struggle, like if you struggle sending dick pics to other people, there's healthy ways, or what other aspects of that, there's healthy ways to deal with that, uh, either with a consenting partner or even communities, and go do that. I encourage you to go do that. Don't just consent. How, like, yeah, that's all I'm saying. Ugh. Um, I think there's secondary comments where it's like, okay, if someone's done something wrong in their life, should they be judged and condemned? No, they should. I mean, if they show signs of improvement, then improvement, then improve. Veil of ignorance, other side, uh, you can, I think it's a little bit more difficult from the masculine end of things to put ourselves in the place of women, but you can put your places if it was your mother or your daughter or your sister or someone that you care about who's a female uh, individual. Part of the reason this is such a triggering topic for me is is I have uh, a friend that I felt very protective of um, and she shared with me in the, I think it was just prior to this with Harvey Weinstein, or maybe it was in the midst of this, um, her struggles. Unfortunately, I was, 
I was not a great friend and did not, I was too fixated on a po- what I saw as a positive aspect of the conversation. This is again, where it's important to check in with individuals. Cause what you think is happening is not necessarily what's happening in the conversation. And it was kind of like after the fact, I'm like, Whoa, that con- there was a different conversation. But part of what hit me after the fact is, is wow, this person has suffered a lot of abuse in the esports space that has affected her extremely deeply. Um, I've had that uh, in other aspects of my life. I'm not going to get into that here. Uh, There's other comments of cancel culture. I don't want to dive into a lot of the fears and concerns around cancel culture. I I, I do want to say as far as fears around it, I think it's important to approach them realistically um, and without fear as far as like, is this what's actually happening? And is this okay? And so on and so forth. Because honestly... I don't know. I feel like there, again, I don't think we're all going to agree moving forward, but I do think with confrontation, with discussion, with negotiation, we can have a better world tomorrow. Um, And granted, we're not going to get everybody on board, but that's part of why having discussions is good. And I feel like there's been some decent discussion. The tournament organizer hasn't hopped in, I'm guessing, because he's in the middle of both participating and running a tournament. I'm pretty sure he's blindsided by this. And I want to leave it to also individuals past this um, as far as what their response will be. Uh, Most sages don't want silence is the trick of it or uh, dismissal like, oh, yeah, dick pics aren't that big a deal or sexual assault. That I don't think people are going to the end of sexual assaults. Not not that big a deal. Um, I don't know. I don't want to say whether I should where people should say I won't watch or support maybe just this individually or things at large. I I leave that up to individuals. I could see where that's an appropriate response for some. That's an important statement to make at large. Um, Yeah. Uh, I've heard some comments with the West is weirdos. If you think you're, you come from a culture where, Oh yeah, we're normal here. I think it's most likely it's just quiet and suppressed. Nobody's normal. And again, myself included. Uh, there were secondary comments. What if there was blackmail and false accusations? Um, I think that it's important to talk about that open and honestly as well. Um, and there's other comments. Uh, should this be discussed in public? Should we be the court judges? I don't think we should be the court judges. Uh, there was other comments. Well, the court, we don't know that there were, there's overwhelming evidence for there to be a, uh, for there to be, innocence or guilt. I think that's kind of shoving responsibility uh, to someone else as well. I will say that, okay, presuming that, okay, in the case of, there are a lot of cases where someone has caused abuse and they don't end up in prison and they don't end up, even though it's, there's a lot of evidence they did, it's not overwhelming evidence and therefore innocent until proven guilty. Does that mean then that they should have all of the same opportunities they did beforehand? Um, I don't think so. I think that's silly and dangerous. Uh, if someone has been accused of multiple murders and it's pretty clear they probably did it potentially, or there's, there's like multiple case, I guess that's another thing to take in line is, is okay. At what point does the number of accusers become convincing? If there's one, if there's two, if there's 20, at what point does that become a, a pattern to where you can say uh, there's another comment in there? where it's uh, everyone's been horny and stupid. And I think there's a different, I I agree with that. I think for both men and women, and I think with women, it gets a little bit less acknowledged, but there's a difference between being horny and stupid and a repeated pattern of behavior as well. I think that's important, but at the same time, I do believe in benefit of the doubt. Um, It's just, okay, uh, what's the line and how does it get negotiated? And what statement gets made to, I, I mean, part of it is, is what do we want our community to be? Do we want it to just be a small club? This is honestly probably what we currently are. It's just a small club of men with very potentially mis- uh, misogynistic views. And is that what we want to have represented? Um, and I suppose these are questions. Maybe, maybe that's what the community is at this stage. I hope not. Um, but I don't know. Um, so the question is, um, you can't be responsible for anybody else. You can put your voice in and you can take responsibility for your own actions and your own beliefs and your own whatever. And that's all I'm asking at the end of the day. 
is that you look at your own behavior and what the impacts and what the causes and all of that stuff. And don't, and don't pull the, well, they did sort of behavior, your own behavior and your own viewpoints and how you want things to work. And then just take responsibility past that. So, okay, if you want to give people a second chance, what, what has to happen beforehand where that's okay? And what sort of, do you recognize and just take on the responsibility of, okay, we're going to lose some people then with the instance of that. And we're certainly going to lose uh, people who know about it who are female uh, that were watching StarCraft. And we're, you're probably going to lose other members as well potentially me included, to be honest. Um, I'm still figuring out. I think I'm going to cast the rest of this season of Hustle League because I don't want to punish the players or whatnot, but I don't know. I'm kind of debating involvement in next season and figuring out what I'm doing next. Uh, yeah. Um, other people are like, oh, it's just drama and you should just ignore drama. I think that, again, oftentimes that's an okay position to take because there is always going to be drama. But in taking that position, also recognize that oftentimes that allows people to keep doing bad things in certain circumstances and it allows abuse to continue. Uh, so reiterating all of this, hopefully this was a little bit more cogent overall. I think it's important to ask what impact you can make. I don't think I'm ever going to have anybody on everybody on the same page. I want to make a positive impact. Overall, I don't know that I, again, I'm kind of, my concern is, as people listen to this and it's just the people who were already agreeing with me, agreeing with me and the people on the opposite end of it, uh, just still disagreeing with me. I hope that some individuals stop behaving badly again, uh, at the beginning of it. Um, primarily my invested interest is I have a kid and I really don't want them to live in a world uh, that where abuse is kind of ignored when people know it's happening and it's kind of brushed under the carpet and not voiced or people, even though they're uncomfortable, they just don't say anything. I don't want to live in that world. Um, but I can't control anybody else. I can only control me and what I do. So I prefer that people find healthy outlets because I think those exist. And again, I just want to reiterate, yeah, explore that with your partner, confront it, uh, have it be grounded and continual consent and continual open communication and discussion because that's extremely important uh, to avoid problems like this. Um, I think I had like a list of thing of comments in the background. Um, kind of been looking at it in the corner. But yeah, I think that just about sums it up. Thank you guys for listening to this. If you did, I recognize that commentating is honestly a privilege, not a right. Uh, <clears throat> honestly, this is mostly me venting to get it out of my system. And I don't think I'm going to do a take five. All uh, The previous couple takes, there were a lot more meandering and a lot angrier than this. Uh, but regardless, I hope that Either the StarCraft community or other communities from our example can do better in the future. Yeah. <clears throat> and again, if anybody needs a private conversation to discuss, hey, I struggle with this and I want a healthy way to deal with that. Do you have any ideas? I'm happy to provide that res those resources or to help you figure it out because I prefer that than people saying, uh, sending random dick pics or trying to... I don't know, force themselves on people. Like, for fuck's sakes. Anyway, excuse the language for people or whatever that they're, where this is triggering. Um, yeah, thanks for listening. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is another rant by Diggity. This isn't one 